Embryo freezing has been around a lot longer than egg freezing. This is because it is more complicated to freeze eggs, in part because of their large size. In fact, it wasn't until the late 1990s that a new technique called vitrification was developed that allowed the efficient freezing of eggs. In 2013, the American Society for Reproductive Medicine stated that egg freezing should no longer be considered experimental. Since then, vitrification has become the primary method for freezing both eggs and embryos. Egg freezing has been used in a variety of situations. In the early days, it was used primarily for fertility preservation in women with cancer who did not have a partner. Later, it was used for those times when a male partner was unable to provide sperm at the time of his partner's egg retrieval. More recently, it has been used by women who wish to delay childbearing for a variety of reasons and to make egg donation more readily available by establishing frozen egg banks. In the future, we expect egg freezing to become become even more common as increasing number of employers and insurance companies offer coverage for egg freezing. Here in the United States, where ridiculous laws and court cases have been attempting to give embryos the same legal rights as actual live children, more patients are opting to freeze eggs and reduce the number of frozen embryos. I talk about that in this video. So with all this egg freezing going on, a very important question arises. Are the pregnancy rates with frozen eggs as high as the pregnancy rates with frozen embryos? Embryos. In the past, these studies have been hard to do since there weren't enough patients who decided to thaw and fertilize their eggs and then attempt pregnancy with an embryo transfer. In the last few years, however, there have been some studies that have started to look at this. In 2017, doctors at the University of Southern California performed a small study comparing embryos from frozen eggs and frozen embryos. The pregnancy rates and live birth rates were very similar. In 2024, in China, doctors compared three groups. Group one were those who froze their eggs, thawed them, fertilized them, and then transferred them. Group two were those who froze the embryos only after fertilization. The people in group two were matched very closely with group one. They found no difference in the chance for pregnancy, miscarriage, or live birth between egg freezing and embryo freezing. Also in 2024, doctors from the Netherlands did a comparison and also found a similar chance for a live birth whether egg freezing or embryo freezing was used. Finally, a study in 2025 in the UK also looked at instances in which eggs were frozen, fertilized, and then frozen again at the embryo stage, and then later thawed and used to attempt pregnancy. Our Infertility TV bottom line is this. There is an increasing amount of evidence to suggest that the success rates using frozen eggs are now similar to what we have seen for freezing embryos. It would seem that egg freezing represents a realistic option for fertility preservation. Infertility TV is your most trusted source for accurate information on infertility and miscarriage. If you are not a subscriber yet, hit the subscribe button right now. A new episode is released every week. Don't miss any episodes. You can also check us out on our website, ivf1.com, where you can become a patient.